Welcome guys back to another video. In this one we are going to change transmission or gearbox oil fluid on this Mazda 3. It's an automatic transmission. It's quite late to be honest because it wasn't a very lucky day today because I got um, Dan was working on his caddy again because he broke another injector. Why not? Um, but <laughs> so I got here before nine o'clock but I have only keys for that door and they don't open. And then has got keys for both. So I needed to wait for him. So I was sleeping in a car for like two, three hours be be before he got here. But anyway, so we're going to change the transmission oil. Um, then has already removed the under tray. So basically now what you need to do, we draw this car a little bit just to heat up the, the, the gearbox oil. So it drain easier. There is a drain plug. I believe there is a size eight hex a bit going into there. So undo it, loosen it, drain the oil. Uh, the car doesn't have to be level because we are going to remove the um, transmission oil pan anyways. So there is a filter uh, inside the gearbox. We're going to change that. I'll show you which oil we use, which filter we use um, and like where are the bolts. So I'll crawl underneath the car, show which one to undo first and then the, on the perimeter of the oil pan undo the rest of the bolts, the small ones, once the oil is drained and you can replace the oil filter and there is there you can feel it from up top i think you need to remove the battery there's a small dipstick in there um, and that indicates like how much the gearbox is filled with oil and i think there won't be needed any adaptations but i'll let you know if there is any so without further ado let us get that changed and after we're going to bleed or replace and bleed the brake fluid on the the same car as well so here I am underneath the car, that is the engine oil pan, the transmission oil pan, there is the drain plug. So it is the same size, same same X, um, hex 8 bit, then the transmission oil drain plug bolt. So first drain that, once it's drained, um, you can undo the bolts on the perimeter of the transmission oil pan. I believe from looking at them, they are size 10. So you'll need to use a size uh, hex 10 socket and basically just drop the transmission. Once we are there, I'll report you back where the filter is and how to remove it and how to replace it. Also like a good measure or a good thing, if you measure the oil, it, it came out from or will come out from the gearbox and you refill the same amount. Um, we believe this oil seen better days. So the oil pan is removed as you can see the OEM from the factory they use some kind of red sealant but in the kit we have a rubber gasket so we're not going to use a sealant that is the the filter I was talking about so it is held by two again 10 millimeter bolts one is here another one is from the other side I'll show you on the new oil filter and here you can see the dipstick that plastic thingy so that's the dipstick and also there is a magnet it looks like a tiny hedgehog, but we will see after the, the oil change if, if, it, if it will get any better. Obviously, we're going to clean the surface of the oil pan, surface of the transmission block, and clean the magnet, and we're going to fill it up with oil and replace the filter. Here is the kit we are going to use. This is the rubber gasket, as I said. Here is the, the oil filter. So one bolt goes there, another here. And we are going to use the mod tool, the ATF6 um, transmission fluid. I don't know what color it is. I guess that's red color. Um, anyways, I believe it takes between five and six liters of oil, but we will fill up first, let's say with four, check with the dip dipstick. And if it needed, fill it up until it will be on the right level. Obviously, like first we will fill it up um, with four, uh, to, to the right level, start it up. Um, cycle through each gear leave it there for 15 seconds let's say and then recheck the level of the oil once it is up to operating temperature and if needed we will add uh, a little bit more of the transmission fluid so we measured how much oil was in there and it looks like it was just around three and a half liters which we believe is like quite low i think it's supposed to be as i said like between five and six but i'll double check that um, and yeah, we found these little 
metal shavings, which is not a good sign. And as I said, that hedgehog. Um, we'll try with the new oil and see, as I said, if it will get any better. Um, fingers crossed it will, but you never know. It's, it's not the best sign, to be honest. Dan is enjoying himself. <laughs> Also, we have opened the oil filter just for you to see. Okay, we have cleaned the oil pan, as you can see, magnet cleaned. We're going to still replace the washer on the drain plug. Uh, here is the, then is preparing the rubber uh, gasket. And he's also already prepared that long extension with the ratchet uh, for the oil fill hole transmission oil fill hole which is down there it's just down there behind the charge port so you undo that 10 millimeter bolt i can't really show you better because we don't want to remove everything the charge pipe we just remove the air box and it's down there anyways um so you need to remove that bolt and then you can pull the the dipstick to check the level and also from the same hole you can fill it up and now let me show you it from underneath how it is looking like so here it is from underneath cleaned and prepared the surface of the transmission box um, also the new filter is on i believe for the oil pan bolts there is definitely a torque spec and a sequence i'm fairly sure the torque spec torque spec is 10 newton meters or like how much they usually gives it like in a funny way between 8 and 11 newton meters so choose whichever you prefer or i would choose 10 newton meters but how i'm going to do it i won't follow the sequence or nor the torque specs i'm going to do it by hand because i've been there i i had like when i cross threaded um, the thread on the oil pan and these are the same bolts so from experience i know how to tighten them obviously we will check for any leaks after we've done it but basically as i said i'm just going to do it by hand and like in i'll fit i'll fit all the bolts so they are coat the thread and then i'm going to tighten it to hand tight so as i've done this this quite a lot of time on the oil pan i've got that feeling already in my hand so i don't i know how uh, tight it should be um so yeah that's how i'm going to do it because uh, the last thing i want to do the use the uh, what's that uh, the helicoil set to retread the the transmission oil or uh, transmission block so yeah so here is the dipstick we removed it as i said there is that 10 millimeter bolt hole where, where the bolt goes and on the dipstick it says 50 celsius so basically you should check the transmission fluid level at 50 degrees of celsius and it should be just there where that i don't know what in, not indentation notch no so but whatever that that is so there um so we're going to fill it first with like i would say four ish liter or maybe four and a half and then heat it up cycle the gears and then recheck it but i guess it will take like around five liters so i, I would say rather we will fill it up fill it up for, with five liters in initially as well Dan was keen to show you guys his OEM filling kit for this transmission. So this is what he manufactured in a 20 minutes, I would say so. <laughs> yeah, and it goes there. Let me shine a light. That yeah, you see, there is the hole. So there is where you have to insert it and then fill it up with oil. So the car is started up now. I cycled through the gears and uh, i'm in the live data of the transmission control module and as you can see the 64 is showing the temperature of the transmission fluid which is 51 so now i'm going to drive that back in and measure on the dipstick the level of the transmission fluid so part inside the car turned it off wait a minute so that the transmission fluid can go back to the lowest position and make sure the car is level so basically it's just on the ground and then I'm going to remove the airbox. I just done, I put that back just provisional. So I'm going to remove it 
pull out the dipstick and check the level. I'll show you the level. Um, in the meanwhile, Daniel is undoing the under tray of that CX-5 because we are going to remove the oil pan. And I'll, uh, that will be in the next video. I'll, be, I'll tell you a couple more things about it. So here is the dipstick. Um, we filled up with four and a half liters of oil. That's when then we measured again, like uh, after we drained it and we put a little bit more. I don't know where that jug is. It's empty, it's empty now. Then says, but we, we put uh, like we filled that jug or we drained a tiny bit more. So we filled, filled it up with four and a half liters of transmission fluid initially. And as you can see, it is just right. It is just about right level. So I'm going to do obviously a test drive tomorrow, just a brief one. See if that grinding noise is, is still present. Um, we've done the brakes. Let me show you what we used because Dan is keen that we show you because he was so sad that we didn't record it. So basically we just bought this brake bleeding machine um, and we used this to break, uh, bleed the brakes and it is much better now. It is much, not sharper, but stiffer. So the brakes uh, work as they should. There is no more air bubbles in there. So yeah, this one after I'll test drive it and I will be happy with the, the results. I'll consider this one a success. Um, but obviously we'll do like a, just a short recap tomorrow. Um, I, will in, I will feature it in one of the videos, like how was how it turned out, but I guess or I, I fingers crossed it it looks really promising.